special thing. Change, change. Expect a miracle change. Watch me change when you change the way you look at things. The things you look at change. When you change the way you look at things. The things you look at change. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're coming to us from. My name is Cheryl Rogers. I am the spiritual leader at Unity Kitchener. And it is my honor and my privilege to co-host Spirit Cafe with my beautiful sister friend, Reverend Barbara Shriner Trudell from Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake. So welcome everybody. We're excited. We're excited about our guest. But before we start, I'm just going to acknowledge the, the lands that we are coming to you from today. Uh, so please um, just take a moment to be quiet and centered as we acknowledge the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today. We acknowledge the importance of these lands, which we call home. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral ceded and unceded territory of the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people. And we are grateful to be here today. Miigwech. It is my honor to and privilege to introduce, and I'm so excited, our guest for today, Sylvia Hayes. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her, but she's going to tell you some more exciting stuff that I just heard before we started. Uh, about her journey and how this came together for her. So Sylvia is a writer, speaker and teacher in the areas of environment, climate change, economic system change and spirituality. She is also a minister in training with Unity Worldwide Ministries. She's founder of the Rethink, an organization with a mission of accelerating momentum toward healthy relationships between humanity and the rest of nature, a restorative economy and a more beautiful world that works for all beings. Sylvia is a spiritual leader and intern with Unity Spiritual Community Central Oregon, and they are so blessed to have her. Her TED talk, Who Do You Think You Really Are? has been viewed by millions all over the world and it's based on her autobiography, When Life Blows Up, A Guide to Peace, Power, and Reinvention. Her publication, Transcend, is for people who want raised consciousness, economic system change, and a healthier, saner world. And she can be reached at sylvia at sylviahayes.com. Welcome, 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 Sylvia. Thank so excited. This topic, I just want to let people know, I've heard Sylvia speak at the Unity Worldwide Ministries Convention, and that's what inspired me to invite her, because she is amazing, she has a wealth of knowledge, she has done so many different things, and the way she's brought them together is just um, divine order. So... Sylvia, it's really nice to meet you. It's my first time. So I'm really excited to see what you have to present and to carry this conversation forward. It's an important one. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys. You know, as I was backstage in our studio, as we were starting listening to your um, opening song, this is a time of change for sure. Yeah. And then I hadn't even noticed, but I saw go along the the streamer that um, your your sort of tagline for the show is courageous conversations for changing times, and um, that certainly resonates with me. I I I'll just riff a little bit, and you guys can jump in with questions um, as you see fit. I've been working on economic system change for a long time now, quarter century, and the reason for that is I I have 
I came to believe that many of the big problems before us right now, from climate change to species loss to entrenched poverty to the challenges um, crossing racial um, economic lines, et cetera, those are actually symptoms of a fundamentally flawed economic model. And this is a challenging uh, topic to talk about because polling repeatedly shows that, especially in, <clears throat> in the West, when you ask people about the economy, what it is, et cetera, the, the terms that come back the most often are like, oh my God, it's like an act of God or a force of nature. It's not. It's a set of systems that humans have created and mm -hmm. that we are shaping and tweaking all the time. And if we want to create a world that works better for all beings, it is going to require fundamental economic system change. So <clears throat> that is that is kind of my my starting point for why I think this is such an important topic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because, you know, I have these conversations often with different people that I work with or that I'm volunteering with in different organizations about creating some equity and beginning to dismantle the, um, the kind of social s structure we have in place that serves a minuscule number of people and there's some great need out there. So I'm really excited to uh, mm -hmm. hear what all you have to say today because mm -hmm. we need change big time. Mm -hmm. We do. And I want to also preface it by saying, I understand that shifting the entire freaking global capitalist economy is beyond the power of any one person. True. My goal with this work though, is, is it's very aligned with new thought thinking because, and new thought principles, we have to be educated enough to be able to challenge the paradigm and challenge the status quo, even while we're in the difficult position of being caught in the paradigm and the status quo. And I think, you know, eco grief and climate anxiety are really increasing, increasingly front and center. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the problem with that is those of us who do love this earth as a living being, which is certainly me, um, we do damage to her too, right? Mm -hmm. We can't not in the system that we're in. So I, I like to put that right up there because I this cannot be a time where we all wait to be perfect in our own footprint before we get pissed about what's happening at a systemic level. And the more we question it, we know how this works in new thought. The more we say no and turn over those money changers tables, the the more readily we will make that system change. So um, let me hit on just a few of the pieces in our current paradigm that I think are very important for people to be thinking of from a different, from a questioning consciousness. Um, the first one is the concept of limitless economic growth. We are in a system, a political system, nationally and globally, that, that is always driving for economic growth. We are literally trying to defy the laws of physics. You cannot have an economic system with billions of human beings driving for ever increasing consumption on a planet of finite resources. So that limitless growth model has got to be challenged and, and evolved beyond. And there's a ton of work. I'm gonna shift later and talk about a lot of the really great things that are happening in the whole new economy, regenerative economy movement, but limitless growth, I want people to really, really think about that. There's another challenge where we really don't pay the true cost for things. It's called externalizing costs. So for instance, we're paying whatever it is at your neck of the woods here. It's about 550 right now for a gallon of gasoline. But the truth is, even if you do not count the cost of climate change, asthma, wildfires here in the West, oh my Lord, even if you don't count that, we've been paying double digits for gasoline for years and years. And that is because we do not factor into that at pump cost 
subsidies that go to oil exploration and production. We don't factor in the use of our military for protecting ocean going tankers, et cetera, et cetera. We don't pay those at the pump. We pay them through our taxes. So it's really not a, a clear free market um, system. And the final piece in the, in the current status quo that I would like to share, um, there's a statement in business that what you, what you measure matters. What you measure is what you're paying attention to. What's the metric we all hear about all the time? Gross domestic product, GDP. Oh my God, we're in a recession because the GDP has stalled out, right? The GDP has been a useful metric because it tracks all the money flowing through the economy and kind of where, which sectors, which industry that money's flowing. The GDP was created to help us come out of World War II. It helped, it helped us see where to direct resources. And ever since then, the world has been addicted to this GDP metric. Even the guy who created the GDP, Simon Kuznets, warned, do not use this as a be all and end all measurement for the progress of a society. It's insufficient. So I wanna show, um, Dea, if you can pop up the slide of the animated graphic, that would be great. And go ahead and, and hit it and get it, get it popping. So what you're seeing here, I'll go over this a couple times, this is showing gross in world GDP, growth in world GDP from 1960 to now. That red line during the same time is climate change. It's the rise in temperature. Can you hit the next graph, graphic? Oh, it's gonna all run again. Hopefully we'll get them all. Just let her run and we'll see. So this is GDP. This is, this is now the growth in plastic pollution over that same period of time. And this is species loss over the same period of time. So what this means, and you can you can pull the slide down if you like, we've, we've seen it. What this means is we have basically been over, o overdrawing our natural capital, our environment, and, and disinvesting, overdrawing our human capital in order to prop up that amount of growth in just fiscal capital. It's a fundamentally unsustainable model. So I'll stop there for questions. Um, I know that's a lot to take in, but the three paradigm pieces that I would like people to, to really be challenging when we hear elected officials or want to be elected officials using these things as proof of progress, limitless growth, GDP as a metric, and and not paying the, the, the real cost for things. Yeah, well, you know, I was sitting here and I'm thinking this is supposed to be a chat show, but boy, I could just listen to you for the whole hour. <laughs> My goodness, because there's things, I mean, and this is one of the things, um, you know, you shared so much in the talk that I attended and now as well about things that we don't know, we don't even think about, right? Yeah. And and so part of having difficult conversations um, is really about educating ourselves uh, to, to think outside the box, um, to challenge the way we think and, uh, you know, to be open to be open to new concepts and new things. Um, and yeah, so my my question though is, Sylvia, what is the alternative? When we talk about a, a new economic system, what does that look like? Yeah, well, I do wanna say, and I'll, t I'll touch more on this as we go along. There is a really um, robust and growing alternative. It, it, some call it the new economy movement. Some call it regenerative economy movement. There are, um, I have a bunch of these resources listed on my website for the Rethink organization. Um, there's a whole new economy coalition in the U.S. There is the We All uh, Wellbeing Alliance, which is based in Europe and is now spreading globally. These are individuals, organizations, businesses who are, who are, who are getting to 
we need to reach a point of what some call steady state, more of a steady state economy. There are thousands and thousands of, of organizations already part of this movement who, are, are, who already understand we cannot do business as usual. So um, I'll, give you an, I'll give you a few other examples. Just looking at the gross domestic product issue, I'm, I have been lucky enough to do some work in Bhutan, little tiny Himalayan town or city, uh, excuse me, country, um, Bhutan. At the time I was there, it was the youngest democracy in the world. And that was because its king, its benevolent monarch said, uh, we no longer need to have a king. We, we, we can have a democracy. I mean, go figure. And um, he also said, you know, it's more important to me that my people are happy than that they are, quote, productive. Mm -hmm. And so they developed a metric called the um, um, National Happiness Index. And that gets kind of laughed at here in the United States. In fact, when I went there, when I went to Bhutan to do work on this very topic, I was at that time the first lady of Oregon and um, the governor also came. And we got skewered in the media when we got back for going off and having happiness. But, you know, happiness was that is actually in our founding documents. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it is it is not a fluffy thing. And with the gross national happiness index, it's quite robust because they've got 27 different metrics that it that include health of the natural environment, health of their people, um, uh, maintaining the integrity of their unique culture. And, and when they are making development and economic budgeting decisions at a governmental level, they are, they're, they're weighing what those mm -hmm. potential policies and actions may do to each of those metrics. So for instance, at one point, um, tourism really took off in Bhutan. I mean, it had just opened up. It was a new thing. It was growing. And there was a contingent that wanted to start having um, helicopter a lot of helicopter tours, tourist tours. And when they ran that through the metrics of the gross national happiness index, they decided not to do it because it would too much erode the environmental um, health, the, the quality of life through noise pollution. They would have to invest in infrastructure that would pull money from other places. So, you know, at one point, France was very much into the beyond GDP movement. A number of countries have, have, have already moved in that direction. Um, so this is not, it's not, there's a lot going on, but you do not hear about this kind of stuff through mainstream media. In fact, one of the actions that I encourage people um, to take is to become uh, especially for people like me, because I am a news junkie. I'll put it right out there. I have satellite radio. That's what I listen to when I'm driving somewhere. I rarely listen to music. I'm junkie, you know, news junkieing out. But I, but I also balance that with um, positive media sources, which I also have links to on the Rethink Resources page, um, because there is a lot of this going on. People who are interested in this can also join certainly join my, my newsletter, the Transcend that was mentioned, because I talk about this and I share these resources. Um, they can become, uh, get the newsletters to the New, New Economy Coalition. There are just a lot of places to be actively engaged in helping birth a saner economic system. Wow. Well, and yeah. I think, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just excited that there is so much being done and that, you know, I just wish more of us knew about it because that just gives us such hope. That's why I'm here. <laughs> that's, my, that's my mission. Yeah, um, I think it um, for us individually, I think we have an opportunity to start where we are. Um, you know, I don't know that I have a, a big influence over the Canadian government, but I do have an influence over my family. Mm -hmm. And so for me, one of the ways in which, you know, in my teaching new thought, it's all about what people really want and truly what people want is happiness. They're, right. they're you know, however they think they're going to get it, but happiness is what everybody wants. And for me, when I was, you know, going to the school to fight for my daughter's well-being, 
right? Because the school goes, no, you have to learn math. You have to be great at it. Give up everything else. Focus all your attention on math because that's what's really important. And I stood in front of the principal and I looked at my daughter and I went, you need to pass math, but that's my only expectation of you. Yeah. Get get through it, but she's a musician. She's an actor. She's a performer. She is a happy individual, and the school is creating a container which prepares them for the current economic system you're talking about, is that you have to That's conform right. to these models, and then you have your... your uh, uh, what do they call them, guidance counselors or whatever, who sit back and say, here's the areas where, you know, you're going to make the most money mm -hmm. rather than what is it that you love? And let's let's look after that. I mm -hmm. love what Bhutan is doing. I think that is where we need to look at going. But we can individually start there by practicing it with our families and our own interactions. Where are our priorities? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and also those of you who are speakers and ministers and have audiences that that this show, you know, that people are listening to this. It's a it's a big, gnarly topic. And it's absolutely, in my opinion, the most important topic to yeah. be discussing. And there are other actions we can take at an individual level. I, I would say one of the um, important ones is to where are you banking? Where are you investing? You know, I've shifted to a credit union because I don't want to be part of the big banks that are funding the tar sand, you know, uh, uh, excavations. Um, Relocalization of economies is going to be a huge part of our future. It's going to happen partly by choice and partly by force. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at what COVID showed us. That was one of that was one of the examples coming out of COVID. Is that our mm -hmm globally connected extraction based supply chain model is really fragile. Look at what's happening in Ukraine, right? Um, really fragile. So the, the more we can go local, the better. Avoid retail therapy. I mean, I think a lot of us are, are into retail therapy when we're feeling a sort of spiritual starvation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, every single material of anything. It's not created out of the ethers. It's coming out of the earth and it's doing damage to the earth. Um, uh, since I have been alive, we have lost 70% of the world's wildlife populations. 70%. And that is because we are expanding the human footprint we're extracting more and more trees, metals, minerals, et cetera. We're cutting down the rainforest to grow beef cattle. These are the things that are that are doing it. Yeah. This is an unpopular thing sometimes to say, but if you, the single biggest thing you can do to reduce your own carbon footprint, probably even more than not driving or driving a more efficient car, is to stop eating meat. Become mm -hmm. vegan. Yeah, or at least really reduce it. I mean, mm -hmm. even even that matters, both from a global uh, climate change and diversity loss, and also from a cruelty perspective. I'm an old farm kid, and I've seen too much of that. But, um, you know, th these are choices that we can make. And then the other piece that I always want to put, put out to unity and new thought audiences is... Um, we, we do need to be having courageous conversations. We do around the table with our colleagues, right? Um, even if it's unpopular, that's okay because mm -hmm. what's popular right now is killing us, literally. It's killing us, it's killing the planet, it is. And there's such a resistance to going in a new direction. Like I remember when the oil industry, the car manufacturers were really struggling and government starts pumping money into car manufacturers to continue yeah. doing what they've been doing. And it's like, we're throwing good money after bad. So we have to change. We got to open up new careers, new ideas of living. If we, yeah. if everybody became vegan tomorrow, what would the cattle industry do? Well, they would find a new way because we're imaginative, we're creative. We do find new ways of creating income. So yeah, I love what you have to say because it's so essential that we start where we are and we begin to make those changes. And 
we need to do it or we're not going to have a planet. Well, the planet will survive. It'll just kill us all off. So yeah, and it'll be a whole lot, a whole lot poorer, a whole lot less rich. That's what breaks my heart. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a piece right now. I saw, um, uh, I won't call anybody out, but I've seen a couple of articles uh, analyzing the economic costs of that of the, that wildlife population cr crash. And it and it pisses me off. It's like mm -hmm. it really shouldn't. That's a sacred issue. It shouldn't even be framed in economics. And that's interesting because when I started my career in environment and all of that, COVID has kind of re-radicalized me. I, I'll, I'll share a little bit more on that because I have a video clip in just a second that I want to show. But when I started my career, this was a, this was spiritual work for me this work on behalf of our earth and, and, and other species. And as I got more and more into it, my formal education, even though I went to Evergreen State College, which is all about systems, um, et cetera, I, I got also pulled into, we, we have to, we have to frame the economic or the, the ethical environmental actions through an economic lens, because that's, that was the thinking. I, I don't really believe that anymore. I talk about this, but I think we're at a point where we have to say that lens is insane. Yeah. We should be concerned about wiping out two thirds of all the rest of the species on this planet because it's creation. It's sacred, yeah. right? So um, let me show you guys. Uh, I, there's a there there. I'm I'm on a little bit of a. I've been on fire for about a year. To, to get people to check out the, the documentary film called The Year Earth Changed. And I would, this shows, thank God, people around the globe had the foresight to document um, photographically what happened in the first few months of COVID when this economy got put on pause. And Dia, if you can pull up that video clip, that would be great. This is, I think, like about a minute and a half. Can we get the video going? Hmm. Well, hopefully, as she's working on that, hopefully well, that we're will go to a commercial break. So this will be a perfect opportunity. We'll take right. that little break. Uh, she can get the video fixed hopefully, and uh, we'll be right back. You're watching Spirit Cafe and our special guest, Sylvia Hayes, and we will be back in just a moment. Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. And we're back with Cheryl Hayes and uh, this Sylvia. Sylvia Hayes and Cheryl Rogers. <laughs> Cheryl and I just became <laughs> <laughs> we just became symbiotes. We're one. 
<laughs> my apologies. Oh my goodness. Oh, we love okay. you, Bobs. Yeah. Arose I just wanted to your name, right? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things, um, you know, when you were talking, Sylvia, that really, really saddens me is our value system. Yes. You know, it, it's like really, like I don't remember that 50 years ago that we had, you know, we had better values, I think. You know, family and friends and relationships and those things were important and that seems to have been pushed aside now for this whole, we've become a number in a system. And, and you know, how productive are we, are we? That's our contribution to society. And that for me is just so sad. Like there's such an imbalance in our value system. Well, um, and we are immersed in a sea of marketing, right? Yeah. We are mer immersed in the story of more stuff, mm -hmm. the story of you want to be sexier, happier by this, right? Mm -hmm. And there, that's because, I mean, really, really, it's a brainwashing system. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a term that's being used a lot now in whatever woke means, um, uh, but decolonizing. That particular term really resonates with me because part. Part of this is we need to decolonize our thinking from the power structures that have put us on this path. Um, I recently uh, learned that over 70% of all the greenhouse gas emissions have been created by 100 companies and primarily in the oil and gas and fossil fuel um, industries, right? Mm -hmm. Big oil, big oil knew they're now being it's they're now being uh, investigated. They knew that they could not recycle the plastic situation. They knew it before they unleashed it and before mm -hmm. we all got addicted to it. Do you know that the very first plastics were bio based? They were bio based. They weren't petroleum based at all. Wow. So, um, yeah, it, it's uh, it is a uh, that is a very challenging thing. But I think the more that we can challenge it in our thinking and in our conversations, the more readily we're going to be able to shift to a different norm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Discomfort on our part as we Pardon? change. It requires discomfort. Like we have to be willing to be uncomfortable yeah. for a minute. I think well, that's right. I think that's for sure. Right. But I also sometimes think we need to question that narrative too, because some making this transition. Oh, I, I also want to say, um, talking about the transition of like the workforce there part of the part of this whole new economy movement um there's a there's a movement called just transition and there are conferences and everything else check it out and that's a play on the word that's kind of a play on just do it and also let's do it justly like mm -hmm. the government could be investing right now in workforce transition out mm -hmm. of legacy industries that are harmful into industries of the future or industries that are actually healing. I'm not done a lot of work in workforce. This is a mm -hmm. doable thing. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we have the video ready. I'd like to show this. Um, this is what happened when our economy got put on pause. Oh, fingers crossed. March 2020. A deadly virus sweeps around the world. Overnight, our lives are put on pause. Today, the WHO declared a pandemic. Issuing a stay home, stay safe order. Directing all of our residents to quite simply stay at home. But as we stop, remarkable things start to change in the natural world. With the clear skies, for the first time in a lifetime, we can see the Himalayas. With beaches closed to humans, these animals were nesting at a more successful rate than we've ever seen. One vocalizing and then the other. I'd never heard that before. From the start of lockdown, across five continents, we have recorded a global experiment of epic proportions that has shown us 
If we choose, we can transform the health of the planet. For all. Wow, it's ring. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that and watched the entire documentary. And even right now, it makes me tearful. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, 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 it's how fast she can heal if we take our foot off her back, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, we didn't, we didn't. We went right back to grow, 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 get the GDP going again, go, go, go. But there's such a powerful lesson in this. You know, the, that, that, um, the piece about the whales, one vocalizing and the other, what that story was right there is the humpback whales, um, I think it was in Alaska, they were for the first time probably in their lifetimes. They were able to hunt like they were supposed to hunt. They were able to leave their calves over near shore and all the moms go out together and do the big group hunting. And they could do that because with the, with the halt in cruise ships, they could hear their calves from a distance for the first time. Wow. You know, so why, why, do, why do we humans believe that we should be able to have cruise lines running breakneck all the time, 365 days a year? If nothing else, why not carve out space during calving season? Why not keep people off yeah. beaches, certain popular, wonderful tourist beaches, when endangered turtles are hatching? Why mm -hmm. not? I mean, we don't have to have the entire planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Our selfishness, our self-centeredness, our uh, individual um, I is more important than we then. And it's killing us. <laughs> yeah. You know, I gave the I gave the um, Sunday talk at my local congregation. It was about spiritual activism. And um, one of my one of the little burrs under the saddle pad that I think is my job uh, in our new thought and unity movement is to help us shift from such an anthropocentric view, such a human centric view. I believe this human as the be all and end all and the only really important species view mm -hmm. is another manifestation of separation consciousness. Mm -hmm. We need a more ecocentric approach mm -hmm. to things. We are not a part from nature. We are a part of it. And it's going to win in the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. This is an evolutionary opportunity for us as a species. Absolutely. Absolutely. Essential. Yeah. yeah. So when COVID hit, um, I had a different reaction than a lot of people did. I had this weird kind of glee about it. And I don't mean that to sound really hard hearted, but it's mm -hmm. because I knew it was putting our economy on pause. Mm -hmm. And that actually is when I very quickly launched my little nonprofit, The Rethink, Be because as soon as COVID hit, as soon as we started to get a handle on it, all you could hear was, let's get back to normal. We need to get back to normal. And I wrote a piece called Normal Was Killing Us that yes. um that was very very widely viewed actually um because we need to create new norms it might be normal it might be comfortable and familiar but this level of destruction this level of consumption is completely abnormal, abnormal. in the entire history of our species right so um yeah, we need to create new norms. And who better to do that than people who have new thought principles and practices on board? Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a, a question, um, and I, I hope it's not taking us away from that, but I think about cryptocurrency. I have no idea what it is. How does that fit into, is, is that part of the current economic system? Is it a, a shift in any way? What is cryptocurrency? Yeah, and I am not an expert in this by any stretch. I I um I was originally kind of excited about it because it seemed like an alternative, although it's kind of like um well I'll come back to that in a second. The amount of energy required to sh to move cryptocurrency around the servers and everything else 
is so extraordinarily polluting that I don't know that it's that it's really mm -hmm. um, part of the solution. Um, it may be. I'm not. I don't have the expertise in that. Mm -hmm. But it. But it. It. It feels to me parallel to. This is difficult information to take in, but we are also not going to be able to solve environmental issues just by shifting everything to renewable energy. We're not because the, the uh, renewable energy requires mining. It requires mining of metals that are, they're literally called rare earth metals. They're very mm -hmm. rare. They're very precious. Every mining everywhere is environmentally damaging. Mm -hmm. Honestly, with the, with the amount of human beings that we have on this planet and the amount of environmental challenge and damage that we have on this planet, the only mining that really makes any sense is mining landfills. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to have to reduce our overall rate of consumption, those of us who happen to live in the wealthy parts of the world. And the mm -hmm. other piece of this that a lot of people don't want to talk about we are also really needing to redistribute wealth. Yes. So that we, you know, so that we spread that consumption out a little. Yeah. I remember, remember when um, that huge, ginormous tanker got stuck, or not tanker, but um, cargo ship got stuck in the Suez Canal. Yeah. And all the clamor was, oh my God, we got to get it unstuck. Look at all the tankers behind it lining up those things are three and four times the size of a football field the amount you know you know they carry thousands of of, of 10 by 20 and 10 by 40 foot containers filled with stuff mostly mm. plastic stuff mm -hmm. um we no one was asking should we be doing that mm -hmm. should we be haul you know shipping stuff all around the globe often through very pristine and beautiful areas and I remember um, a report from a Washington, I think it was a Washington Post reporter who was there covering it. And it had become quite a spectacle. And a lot of the local village villager kids and whatnot um, would come and watch these, these efforts to get this behemoth moving again. And one of the little Egyptian boys uh, said to the reporter, why don't they just take some of the containers off? It could probably feed my village, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. There's something broken. There's something broken in that system. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So again, just grateful to hear that there is so much being done. And I'm certainly going to take a look at, at uh, your website um, so that I can explore those um, to, to shift some of my sadness and angst. You know, you spoke about uh, 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 economic, what would you uh, uh, weather change. Yeah, that's it. What, what did you say? Eco grief. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, we're yes. actually, I'm actually developing through the rethink. Um, we're doing a fundraising campaign right now to develop some programming around eco grief. How do we, how do we turn it into empowerment? You mm -hmm. know, how do we add celebration? What are some practical steps to be able to sit in this mess that we're in? Mm -hmm but keep ourselves hopeful and optimistic as we're building. Yeah. I I can't remember who originally said it, but we're in this challenging time of being um, like both, what is the word? Both the, the um, like the, the morgue and the midwife. Right. It, it's yeah. like we're in the, in the death and the climb, but also in the rebirth. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not a time for wimps. You know, but I, I think um, yeah. I think the really important aspect here to leave with people, this is a it, it it's been said that if you don't ask the right questions, the answers don't matter. Mm -hmm. We need to be asking the right questions, even if we don't currently have all of the answers, because if we keep asking the right questions, we will find them. Yeah, we will get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and yeah, so I, I, I was just wanting to type in there, be hopeful, optimistic, and part of the solution. Yes. yes. 
I'd love right. to pull up the, um, Dea, if you can, um, I would love for you to pull up that third slide, which is another video clip. And hopefully you can hear me talking over this. Can you hear me? Yep. What you're seeing here is a list, just a list of names of organizations that are all part of this effort to come into a healthier relationship with our earth. If you started watching this at this speed, and you watched it 24 hours nonstop, you would not be close to the end of the list. If you watched it for the next three days nonstop, not even go and pee, you would not be close to the end of the list. Three mm. weeks later, no. It would be months. And this is only a starting point partial list. The effort, the effort to shift into a more um, healthy, relationship with all of nature is the largest social action ever in the history of our species. So important. And mm -hmm. it, that's so exciting to see that list and to mm -hmm. see yep. and knowing that it's not complete, that yep. there's more and more. I think my first real example of the, the whole concept of consciousness, because there's been that story, we're the ones who are conscious, which is such BS. Yep. But I was I was a minister in Vernon, BC, and I came out of my bathroom and walked around the edge of my bed one day and there was a beetle on the floor. And I did this and the beetle did the same thing <laughs> and then scurried behind the, the, the dresser. And I thought, I scared it probably yeah. even more than it scared me. Mm -hmm. And of course I did. Like, yeah. but who, you know, there's this attitude, we'll just squash a bug, kill a bug, kill this, kill that, get rid of everything because what value does it have? But the truth is consciousness is everything. Mm -hmm. Consciousness so, is everything. Yeah. It's everything. We have to start where we are and do every little tiny step we can do is going to make a difference. And mm -hmm. I love COVID as well. Mm -hmm. What? Nature flourish and animals roaming around that we never see in our cities. Here in Toronto, I had little rabbits ram running around my yard and deer wandering two blocks away. And it's like, it was amazing. It was we amazing. could have it, we could have it again. We have got to stop. We have got to stop spreading the human footprint. That's just yes. the truth of it. Um, and I, you know, and I do think it's really, really, really important to note while we have wiped out a lot, a lot, there's mm -hmm. still an awful lot left. Mm -hmm. um, and it can, and she's resilient and she's strong, mm -hmm. you know, so, so we still have time yeah. to come into balance, but it, the sooner, the sooner, the better. And the more people who demand it, the better, even, even as we are being part of a problem because we're in, we're caught in the system we're trying to change. Yeah. That is challenging and it's okay. It's where we mm -hmm. are. We're, I believe we're here for a reason. Absolutely. Each one of us, especially those of us who are consciously spiritually awakening um who do feel so much pain at what is going on in creation mm -hmm. we're here that's right saddle up i'm seeing i'm seeing <laughs> get her done um, yeah. <laughs> i like the enthusiasm saddle up trailblazers that's thank right. you wayne that's, that's exactly wayne right. from calgary just yeah that's awesome yeah yeah and oh. and Sorry, one of the things I, I want to make sure people do before um, they leave, uh, we leave here today, is to sign up for your newsletter, Transcend, because I love your newsletter. You know, you start with these, you know, you start talking about issues and things, and then I love the way you bring it together spiritually at the end. And it's it just, yeah, I just love them. So I, I would encourage that. others. I appreciate that, Cheryl. As I was sharing before the show went live, my Transcend publication is relatively new. I think there's a there's a link for it. There will be in another slide. We'll show you, or Dea will put it in the chat, or whatever that. However, that's going to happen. But for many many years, you know, because I've been on this environment, climate, economic system change career for a quarter century. All my formal education is in that, and then for the last five or six years. I've been on this path of becoming a unity minister, which is mind blowing and spirit has such a sense of humor. Um, but I, and I've kind of been keeping those two audiences separated in my work. And with transcend, 
it's all integrated. I'm just putting it all out there because at the end of the day, this solving the human predicament that we have created, it is a matter, it is a spiritual issue. It is a matter of consciousness. And it's a matter, I believe, and I was very strong about this in my Sunday talk. Right now, the economic, environmental, political world crisis that we're in is a call to action. And I really do not believe, I believe a spirituality that is just private and self-absorbed and that is not taking action in a political and economic and out in the world way is missing the mark of what these times call for. Mm -hmm. You know, spiritual activism is kind of a fusion of deep inner knowledge, um, discipline with our own inner spiritual practice and work and wise radical action for a world that works better for all Mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that's what anyone listening to a show like this, I believe that's what we're being called to do. Yeah, I agree. And the way we create a better world is by being better individually. And, you know, when you mention normal, I I taught my daughter at a very young age that normal does not exist. What does exist is mediocrity and familiarity. And that's that's the place we've been living in and where we tend to to stay sometimes. And that's really, uh, that's where we have to give that up and go, let me be sensational. Let me be unique Mm -hmm. and special like I was created. Let me stand out in a crowd and be my authentic, crazy, wild, beautiful self and let that be the leading force. And if we start operating from those values, we begin to, that's when we begin to create a world that works in the highest and best way for everyone. Because when I'm right right now, (laughs) I like that. Familiarity and mediocrity is, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's it's just changing the whole way we operate and deciding that we're going to stand for something Mm -hmm. rather than settling for everything. And, you know, does it get a little uncomfortable to step outside the comfort zone that, well, I don't think it's a comfort zone. It's an uncomfortable zone, but it's familiar. When we step out of the familiar zone, yeah, it feels, you know, a little bit, ooh, but it's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It was, it's been a challenge for me to go more and more vegan. I have yet to find a vegan cheese that I actually like. Right. <laughs> but yeah. why not? Uh, yeah. I also can like, cut back on an awful lot of things when I know the damage that they're doing. I actually love the planet more than I love cheese. And Mm -hmm. I love the animals that are horrifically ripped from their mothers at birth Mm -hmm. enough to think about it. Right. So um, there are some vegan is awesome. I love it. Kudos to you. And thank you for that action. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful action. Mm -hmm. I also want to leave people with actions. And again, I think having conversations about this, having conversations about questioning the status quo, that is a form of activism. Asking the right questions is a form Mm -hmm. of activism. Speaking truth to power, asking these questions to all officials. You know, um, I live in one of the fastest growing parts of the country. And there are a lot of us who are saying at some point, we need to check this. We have an election going right now that I'm hoping is going to oust a couple of the existing county commissioners who have just been on the growth, growth, growth bandwagon. One of the, one of the paradigms that I challenge, I've done a lot, a fair bit of writing and had some coverage in our local media development. We, we call everything that humans do development, right? A new housing development BS. There is a difference between growth and development. Mm. Growth is about getting bigger. (laughs) Development is about getting better. I would argue that wiping out more and more and more of our urban trees, more and more and more of the wildlife corridors is not development. It's a housing project. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so questioning that questioning the language, writing letters Mm -hmm. to the editor. Um, And by the way, 
I have only received positive feedback for mm -hmm. those for those kinds of things. I've been mm -hmm. crucified for other things. That's a whole different story. That's why I have a book called When Life Blows Up. But um, the people are hungry for leadership and people we feel we feel the wrongness in the mm -hmm. directions that we're going. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. the more we step up, the more the more we. Um, I think the more we empower others to do that as well, it's how we grow the movement. Yeah, absolutely. And I, yeah, I want to share one more thought that I have because I'm really feeling this. What I love about the way you uh, you speak and how passionate you are, it's all about for something. It's not against something. Yes. yes. Which is another thing that is just so powerful and so transformative for me. It's what our movement has to offer. You know, Mother mm -hmm. Teresa, I, I'm going to paraphrase a quote, but she once said that um, she was asked to why she didn't attend anti-war marches. And she said, I will never do that. But when you show me a rally for peace, I will be there. Yeah. As a lifelong, I shared this in my talk Sunday, as a lifelong environmentalist, when my life did blow up so hugely and it, that was a real spiritual awakening that's a long different conversation but it was also very disillusioning because i i could clearly see that i really had been part of the problem by the way i was engaging in that environmental movement because so much of our activism in the west especially is framed in the language of separation it's the war against poverty, the battle against big oil, the fight against climate change. Well, how's that been working for us? Yeah. Not so well. Part, yeah, and right. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm excited about one of the main reasons I'm on a new thought ministerial path is I believe it has incredible power to, to, yeah. to help make this shift. Mm -hmm. And part of that is exactly what you're talking about. You know, it's why it's why unity has a spiritual power of imagination. Mm -hmm. We need to imagineer a better world, right? Mm -hmm. We have everything yeah. that's ever created is created twice. It gets created first in our thinking and then out here. Yeah. And so what are we for? We're for a healthy planet. We're for kindness mm -hmm. to people, right? And animals. Mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're, we're to feeling better. We're to a world where we don't need to feel eco grief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't need antidepressants and uh, alcohol and whatever else to numb us out. We can mm -hmm. actually get into nature and live, mm -hmm. express yeah. experience mm -hmm. and be more holy who we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Good job, Sylvia. You're awesome. Thank you. Uh, I am awesome, and so are you. So are we all, right? <laughs> We're certainly going to have to have you back again, uh, Sylvia. That's for sure. Um, yeah. And, and on uh, my joy show, I'd love to have you on my yeah, show. Yeah, I, I, I see so many opportunities for you uh, to do more of the speaking. I'm certainly going to be inviting you to do some speaking at Unity Kitchener and Ottawa and uh, – you know, um, like Reverend B has a joy show on Friday afternoons on New Thought Media Network. And uh, like she says, I know her and she's going to be on you like a fly. So. <laughs> well, I'm one of those weird, weird creatures who really likes public speaking. I always have. So I'm grateful. I'm, at the end of the day, I'm a messenger and a communicator. So wherever yeah. I can get these kinds of um, ideas out to people, I really try to do that. For sure. Fantastic. That's awesome. wonderful. Love it. Love yeah. it. Thank you so much. So any closing thoughts, Rev B? Uh, be yourself. Be that unique, divine, fabulous self you were created to be and live in harmony with all of life everywhere, people, animal, nature, all of it. There is only one. Wonderful. So, <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you so much. Go Earth. <laughs> Yes, go Earth. Go Earth. You've been watching Spirit Cafe on uh, Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. And we are so grateful for your being here, for sharing your time with us. And we hope you will join us every Wednesday and share and care and tell your friends. And let's let's create a better world together. And subscribe. <laughs> yes, subscribe.
Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Love Bye -bye. you. <laughs> On behalf of everyone at New Thought Media Network, thank you for being a member of our virtual family. Your financial contributions help share the New Thought message with people from around the world. Please visit and contribute at www.ntmedia.org forward slash donate. New Thought Media Network, come be you. And please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace and blessings. <laughs>